So you recently posted a paper on star bootstrapping reasoning with reasoning. Yeah. Uh, so can you explain like uh, chain of thought yeah. and that whole direction of work, how useful is that? So chain of thought is this very simple idea where uh, instead of just training on prompt and completion, uh, what if you could force the model to go through a reasoning step mm -hmm. where it comes up with an explanation and then arrives at an answer? Almost like the, the intermediate steps before arriving at the final answer. And by forcing models to go through that reasoning pathway, uh, you're ensuring that they don't overfit on extraneous patterns and can answer new questions they've not seen before uh, by at least going through the reasoning chain. And, and like the high level fact is they seem to perform way better at NLP tasks if you force them to do that kind of chain of right. thought. Like let's think step by step or something like that. It's weird, isn't that weird? Uh, that it's not that weird that such tricks really help a small model compared to a larger model, mm -hmm. which might be even better instruction tuned and more common sense. So, so these tricks matter less for the, let's say GPT-4 compared to 3.5. Uh, but, but the key insight is that there's always gonna be prompts or tasks that your current model is not gonna be good at. Mm -hmm. And how do you make it good at that? Uh, by bootstrapping its own reasoning abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that these models are unintelligent, but it's almost that we humans are only able to extract their intelligence by talking to them in natural language. But there's a lot of intelligence they've compressed in their parameters, which is like trillions of them. But the only way we get to like extract it is through like exploring them in natural language. And it's one way to uh, accelerate that is by feeding its own chain of thought rationales to itself. Correct, so the idea for the STAR paper is that you take a prompt, uh, you take an output, you have a data set like this, you come up with explanations for each of those outputs and you train the model on that. Now, there are some prompts where it's not gonna get it right. Now, instead of just training on the right answer, you ask it to produce an explanation uh, if you were given the right answer, what is the explanation you would have provided? You train on that. And for whatever you got right, you just train on the whole string of prompt, uh, explanation, and output. This way, uh, even if you didn't arrive at the right answer, if you had given, been given the hint of the right answer, you're, you're, you're trying to like reason what would have gotten me that right answer, and then training on that. And mathematically, you can prove that it's like related to the variation lower bound uh, in late, with the latent. And uh, I think it's a very interesting way to use natural language explanations as a latent. That way you can refine the model itself to be the reasoner for itself. And you can think of like constantly collecting a new data set where you're gonna be bad at, trying to arrive at explanations that will help you be good at it, train on it, and then seek more harder data points, train on it. And if this can be done in a way where you can track a metric, you can, like start with something that's like say 30% on like some math benchmark and get something like 75, 80%. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's gonna be pretty important. And the way it transcends just being good at math or coding is if getting better at math or getting better at coding translates to greater reasoning abilities on a wider array of tasks outside of two and could enable us to build agents using those kind of models. That That's when like, I think it's gonna be getting pretty interesting. It's not clear yet. Nobody's empirically shown this is the case. That this couldn't go to the space of agents. Yeah, but this is a good bet to make that mm -hmm. if you have a model that's like pretty good at math and reasoning, it's likely that uh, it can handle all the corner cases when you're trying to prototype agents on top of them.